exactly right. Yeah. <laughs> cool. <laughs> so welcome everybody. This is SharePoint Dev Weekly episode 14. And this time once again we have a visitor in place uh, because we want to have new people uh, in this course as well. Um, and this time our visitor is Laura. So let's actually jump directly to Laura and I'd let Laura to do an introduction. Who are you? What do you do? Well, hello there. My name is Laura Kokkarinen. I work as a developer at Sulava in Finland, and I also write a blog at laurakokkarinen.com about Office 365 development related things. And I've been working with SharePoint since 2011. And last year I decided that it was about time for me to move on to the cloud and start working with Office 365 and Azure. And that's what I've been doing. And it's been yeah. a lot of fun. <laughs> yes, excellent. <laughs> What do you mean just last year? Why why what's why just last year? <laughs> well, I wanted to earlier, but um there were no opportunities before I switched jobs. Yeah. So you flipped a different company mm -hmm. and they had offered more mm -hmm. uh, Office 365. Kind of makes sense, makes sense. What kind of things do you actually do then uh, in the day-to-day -day work? So you uh, you clearly you write awesome blog posts and those are really brilliant. They're really thoughtful, thoughtful and long ones. So they're not just a reminders which are super valuable as well, which some people do, but then it's like clarifying things. But then on your day-to-day -day job, uh, is, it, uh, is it a modern SharePoint? Uh, what, what kind mm -hmm. of things are you doing? Yeah, mostly our customers these days use modern sites. And what is my role in the projects is that when consultants can't do something themselves, they ask me to hop in and do some programming and customizations and things like that. And it's the whole Office 365 thing. So I do stuff for Teams and SharePoint and Planner, yeah. things like that. It's very, there's a lot of stuff. And I like that, that I can do different yeah. kinds of things so I don't get bored. Some people might say that I should have like a tighter niche, but I quite like that. I can do different kinds of things. Almost like I have. I've been working now in SharePoint in 12 years. So, but to be fair, nowadays the SharePoint is much more than just the SharePoint because, like mm. I said, it's it's also understanding the Office 365 and and everything else. So. Um, is it no, not 12 years, 13 years. Anyway, um, Waldeck. So, <laughs> thank you, Laura, for that one. Uh, what about you? So on the on the past week, if we uh, go to cover around quick rounds uh, on the on the call. Sure. So past week there was the event in Harlem uh, where I delivered two talks about SPFX. One was SPFX for admins. The other one was about um, connecting from SPFX to API secured with AAD. And I got the opportunity to live debug my API because it didn't work on stage. <laughs> so like I was totally tripped. And then eventually I was tripped to the point where I said, you know what, I'm going to spend the weekend to try to really get like understand what kind of different error messages you can get along the way from securing your API. Because obviously there are quite a few things to go to go through to get in place with AAD itself. It's not related to SPFX even. Right, yeah. so even just the AAD part, there are quite a few things to um, to get in place there too. So I basically spend the weekend trying to go like, okay, what are the all the different errors that you can get along the way from going to through your API in AAD to yeah. to having that code in web part in, um, in SPFX. So I wrote an article about that and finally understood like, yeah, I forgot like one little thing during the demo on stage. But like, oh darn. But yeah, now I know. Now I now I know all of them. It was like, and I found out that over the course of the last few months, something's changed. So what used to work one way doesn't work that way now, and that's exactly what tripped me over. So okay. now I know. Yeah. <laughs> but it, but it hasn't changed since the GA, right? It's changed. Uh, yes, yeah, 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 yeah. Yes, exactly. Yeah. And, and and I mean, I've been working with. Uh, AAD secured APIs since, I don't know, four years now. So I've seen different things come and go, so like yeah. settings are in different locations, things change, the way you create API or AAD apps, the way you register them, that has changed. So there are quite a few things that change too. Uh, but yeah, even with regards to the errors that, that you get, that changed change too. And even between the pre-GA version of um, AAD in SPFX and now, things aren't the same either, right? So if you've been sure. since the very fir fir first day around and now it's like, yeah, but that used to be there and now it's here, right? So there yeah. are quite a few things to keep in mind, but even still, right? Even still, just the fact that there's a class that 
abstracts away in SPFX all of the work that you have to do with all what implicit flaws, AADF, like all of that is gone in SPFX. So you can just connect to your API, assuming that you've done it correctly, which I obviously didn't. So, <laughs> but that's that's absolutely one of the examples why it's hard to keep up with the technical documentation. So it's like some of the the guidance documentation, what we have in the docs.microsoft.com under SharePoint framework is actually completely outdated already. Uh, why? Because every single month, every single week, something, a, a checkbox is moved from there to there, or it's gone, or it's or new settings are, are uh, added back, and or the default values are changed. And it's 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 an interesting, obviously, we're getting this feedback a lot from the commu community, so customers and partners, but it's, it's actually challenging for us as well. Uh, so um, trying to keep up with the materials and the changes and all of that so but I, I don't think there's a way this is this is not going to get easier um or what's your no. take on it so if you think about the speed of innovation and like laura you said really well the speed of innovation you need to embrace it you you need to jump on board of it and also accept the fact that you, well there's no way to keep up with everything you can try to keep up with in a certain level but uh, understanding that there's uh, there's just limits of the day basically right but i guess the the challenging part is that Sure, so that is on our side. On the other hand, you have the customers, the partners who need to do their work and they cannot spend days and weeks debugging stuff sure. because we sure. don't scale to write dogs, right? So sure. there has to be um, a compromise like we meet somewhere in the middle trying to stay as up to date as we can. Maybe yeah. even, and I guess that the fact that already now, compared to the back in the days MSDN docs, there was only a select group of people who could do that. Already yeah. now, everybody can submit PR with a fix, like you say this, but I'm seeing this, let's fix that. Yeah. right? And then we only need to scale with reviewing that and, and approving that. But that is already the first step. And I think that eventually it will go more towards that direction, trying to basically crowdsource all the docs. Yeah. Absolutely. Well, the, yeah, so that's what we've been doing with SharePoint Docs for quite a long time already, actually, technically. So um, there's a longer story behind of it to do many, many reasons ago. Uh, quick note on that. Many, many years ago, we kind of lost our technical writers on the SharePoint dev, do many reasons. And then we needed to get clever because um, <laughs> every single bits and pieces of SharePoint dev uh, documentation landed on my table. And then we needed to get, start <laughs> figuring out. Get how writing. To, exactly. Get writing. <laughs> <laughs> And I don't scale, so <laughs> we needed to be more clever with MVPs and, and the other people in the community as well. So, mm -hmm. um, which has worked out pretty well, so amazingly well. Um, not a easy journey, but hey, how it works. Um, and what's interesting now is that uh, later today, this is Monday 19th of November. So later today, I will have a meeting with um, certain other organizations who are now coming to ask from us <laughs> that, how did you do this? How, how do you actually do this work with the MVPs and external people and, and get people to contribute? And it's like, well, I don't know. So we ended up on this by an accident, to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> um, but Laura, what about you? Uh, so what have you been doing up to on the SharePoint Dev during the past week? Mm, Anything well, interesting? Yeah. Actually, I thought it was interesting. I don't know if you think it's so interesting. <laughs> Maybe I should tell you a little bit of the background of the project. So the customer has a lot of projects and they have team sites that are connected to teams and they do the collaboration there. And then they have communication sites, which are like these presentations for their stakeholders about the projects that are going on or coming in the future. And then they wanted to offer these stakeholders an option to subscribe to news regarding those projects. And in the past, I've implemented this automated workspace provisioning um, for them. So I implement this SPFX web part that has this button subscribe. And um, <laughs> the workspace provisioning, basically when it provisions the communication site, it also provisions an Office 365 group with application permissions. So it doesn't automatically create the team site. It just creates the Office 365 group. And when the user hits that button, um, the web part basically deduces from the URL what is the group mail nickname. And then the user gets added to that group and then uh, the marketing people or whoever can just send email to that group and there's this switch that you can tick or whatever that sends actually the email to not the group mailbox but to the individual users. Individual. Yeah. yeah, cool. 
And the, it's an Office 365 group because they have a lot of guests and you can't yep. add guests to distribution lists of mail enabled security groups. Yeah. So basically I did the web part and then I made the changes to the um, PMP template. And I also <laughs> <laughs> I also co uh, coded this uh, console application because they had like already 150 of those communication sites and they wanted to get the front page changed for all of them yep. so that the new web part would be on, on them and a couple of other web parts switched. So the console application updates all of the front page. Yep. Front pages. Did they apply a template way of doing that, or was it just a pinpointing to the to the front page and adding the web part in? Just out of curiosity. Uh, this is on the SharePoint PMP call online. Yeah. 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 So the stuff what Bert Johnson wrote at some point. So being able to access the the, uh, the sections and the web parts <laughs> yes. and the modern pages and put a web part there. So I added looking a new into and moved a couple of web parts to a new section. Oh. Uh, that's a I, I so he did a awesome Bert Johnson did an awesome job on that API uh, implementation. We're looking into having a native out of the box APIs, but the modern pages are actually evolving also so fast that whoever is implementing the API on top of the modern pages, they need to stay up to date on the capabilities of modern pages. So it's it's actually interesting challenge because most likely it's it's different people who would be well it is different people it's shipment engineering but still different people who are who are would be implementing the craft api on a modern pages versus who's actually running the modern pages so there's a kind of a catch the train moment inside of the engineering as well uh, so hmm. that's why whatever bert has implemented already is super valuable because it's it's uh, it's filling the gap of that missing api so using the PMP system uh, core extension. Um, as long as we will get that one also to the .NET Core or .NET Standard level, uh, which will happen hopefully soon, we're still waiting for some resources in the engineering to be able to move that over, get the native system over, and then we can move to PMP over. So, but let's see. Anyway, a uh, cotillion of uh, things moving around <laughs> here and there uh, and flying here and there. Um, <laughs> Uh, I'm going to take one minute. So last week I was in I was in Connect as well. Uh, that was last week. Uh, time flies so fast. I had a keynote where uh, I had a Andrew Connell sent me a message. Uh, uh, no, that's not yet visible on the screen. <laughs> Sorry. And so I had a keynote. I had a demo uh, issue on a keynote. To be fair, I knew what was these two, so that was kind of a uh, funny thing. But I forgot about. <laughs> so adding web part on on the on the Teams tab, um, and I configure the Teams tab and click Add. And it fails uh, immediately when I click the click the the add uh, operation the button. I remember that damn I there's the issue when we haven't actually fixed this. So I knew that don't change settings. Don't change don't settings. Say, don't change the settings of a web part. It will work. So uh, right now, if you try to more, uh, configure the web part or a Teams tab when you're adding the Teams tab to the Teams, it will actually fail. If you do not test the settings and you go through with the default settings, everything will work. And it's a super obvious bug which we should have got. And I noticed that, like, what was it, eight hours before the go live? So we decided to still go live. Um, um, so regardless of that bug being there, uh, but it was a, as part of the keynote, it was an interesting kind of a hey, and here we go. And then I clicked the button. I already knew that that's going to fail, but you can actually <laughs> then play around with the audience because it's like you knew that that's going to fail, and there's going to be the whoa. And, so, but removing the tab, tab and then recreating that uh, without configuring. Uh, <laughs> That was the lead sweat part, which reminded me the lead sweat part we demonstrated in the keynote of uh, SPC North America. Uh, that's written by Valdek, and that's going to be released later this week as a general sample as well. So people can actually see uh, how it was implemented. It's a pretty decent looking web part, actually. So leads, showing leads and, and all of that. So. Cool. Uh, I think we need to actually move on the, on the uh, topics. So let me share my screen. Um, and let me move that Teams discussion there. Can you see my screen? Yes, of course. Excellent. So uh, let's do a random uh, topic and and well, random, not a random. We select pre-selected. <laughs> <laughs> How to grow vegetables? <laughs> yes. You're reading what? <laughs> the wrong screen, Vesa. The <laughs> <laughs> wrong screen. Yeah. These these recordings are highly scripted, as you can see. <laughs> Um, writing these jokes was insanely hard. Now, um, so 
few uh, official items first. So last Friday we uh, released a, a this kind of a blog post. I was asked to push out a quick blog post related on this one. So we're looking into moving the out of the box SharePoint uh, web parts and first exper first body experiences to React 16. Um, and we're looking into then having a guidance for people to test their third party web parts or so custom web parts that they don't have any issues related on this move. And uh, we've been testing this with the SharePoint starter kit in our eDoc and in our pre-production environments, and we haven't had any issues. So what will technically happen is that it doesn't matter if you have an old SharePoint framework web part using React 15, if you used React, or React 16, the new SharePoint framework web parts, it will just magically work. So we will do run side by side on the pages, regardless of which version you were originally using when you developed the web part. So technically still today, if you created a SharePoint framework web part version, uh, with a version 1.0, it should work in SharePoint Online. So uh, we do promise backward compatibility and all of that with SharePoint Framework, um, because otherwise enterprises could not actually rely on, on the platform. So we need to keep on supporting the old versions as well. Now, more on this uh, later, uh, I would say, but for now, uh, we, we might be even actually change the, the guidance on the testing, but the, our intention is to start testing and previewing this in 27th, was it 27th of November? Uh, I can't find. That is correct. Yeah, if you go up, second paragraph. Yes, it is. There we go. I can read. Who at twenty seven and seven? You you, you 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 cannot actually. I helped you with that. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> <laughs> The second article which went live last week uh, was the MVP article, how I joined the BMP core team. Uh, so this is from Velin, uh, Velin Georgievic, uh, Georgiev. Uh, so Velin is a, a the, is a new newest uh, team member in the BMP core team, which basically means that he's helping on the on the community engagement and community. Uh, submissions and all of that in the GitHub and other areas as well. Um, we The core team, the, what does it mean to be in a core team? As an example, some of the MVPs, they they run or they lead some of our open source projects, like uh, Stefan is leading the SPFX extension, uh, 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 Waldeck is leading the Office 365 CLI and so all of that. So we're trying to scale because there's so many initiatives and projects ongoing uh, using the MVPs, we can then scale more efficiently. Um, and you have to be an MVP to be able to get to the BMP core team. And before to get to the BMP core team, uh, you obviously need to contribute and be an active and helpful. Um, so long story short, uh, but this is uh, Velin basically explaining how he, how he got there, how, how he's been doing a few years worth of uh, contributions, um, so uh, all of that stuff. Now, the the third kind of out of the box or Microsoft article uh, is around Visual Studio 2017 version 15.9, uh, which is by the way, highly confusing because it's Visual Studio 2017 version 15.9. Because why isn't it Visual Studio 17? So it would be somewhat aligned. Anyway, it doesn't matter. <laughs> um, but in here, uh, we can actually find then uh, the, the SharePoint 2019 project templates are included in this one. Uh, so uh, technically, this is um, a slightly different team. So this is team team in the Visual Studio side who is responsible of these templates. And now what we did was that we wanted to first made sure that we had to see some NuGet package for 2019. And then, uh, then we uh, really uh, upgraded the existing templates. There is not any new functionalities in these templates. Uh, it's basically just a version pump uh, from the 2013 and 2016, just to be clear on that. But now what it means is that you're able to run uh, or create farm solutions, sandbox solution, office add-ins against SharePoint 2019. So that's really the key here. Um, with SharePoint 2016, uh, if we compare to that one, I think it took us six months to get the templates updated, which, so this time we wanted to fix this uh, properly. So I started, the, we started the discussion already in spring with the Visual Studio guys. Uh, cool. Now, uh, well, this is actually still a Microsoft guy. So, but this is already really interesting. I wanted to have also Loras and Valdex uh, input on this one. So Jax used to be an SPFX team. He used to be in my team, technically, I, uh, he's been now borrowed to do some other stuff. So he's uh, the guy who's working on the flow and power apps integration in SharePoint side. Um, so there's a few other people there as well. Um, but what this one is basically the point, this blog post is really important, is that it also pinpoints the fact that, hey, by the way, we do support uh, these non-craft APIs as well. So this blog post is using 
the craft proxy APIs from SharePoint without hitting the craft uh, URL. And when we started recording this uh, or uh, this, this session, we uh, Laura had a good question on also on the fact that what's what's the value of doing this? So what's what's the, the really the thinking point uh, behind of this? So technically, whenever you hit the Craft API, um, the, the all of the calls are actually uh, routed through uh, these APIs here. So technically, you always go through these APIs. So the Craft calls then those APIs, and then that pipe passes uh, to the SharePoint uh, server side APIs. The really the key difference obviously is in authentication. Uh, so when you hit the craft API, you need to have permissions to those scopes. When you hit these APIs, you can hit them in the context of the user, and that's really, really valuable. Questions, comments? Cool? Woohoo! <laughs> <Yes>. Super excited. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, and these are also supported, by the way, in SharePoint 2019. So uh, obviously SharePoint 2019 doesn't have a craft APIs, but uh, because the SharePoint 2019 has been forked from SharePoint Online Code, uh, you can hit the, the version 2.0 REST APIs in SharePoint 2019 as well. Uh, so I guess the interesting thing is like, when would you use the, these, right? Because as, as, you, as you said, this is a proxy to the server-side APIs, and you could assume that majority of them are exposed either through REST or CSOM, so why this? When would you want to use this in SharePoint? <laughs> well, obviously the authentication is a big difference. Uh, okay, so but I mean, if you are if if you are already there, why not not use CSOM or REST? You, uh, consistency, maybe. Uh, sure, debatable. Uh, the future, uh, few, well, we are investing more and more on the Craft APIs, but I, I would say I would still be a super. Um, I would not say that we will expose all the things what we have in REST or CSM in the craft even in the future because um, that's a duplicate work in certain sense. Um, fair point, fair, fair, good question. Why wouldn't you actually hit the REST API versus this? I think the one interesting These thing was- well documented um, though. Well, they are better documented than majority. There are a lot of REST endpoint in oh, SharePoint, correct. correct. Um, I think the one interesting scenario is, I'm not sure if this is this article or that was discussion on Twitter, that was around like, how would you get a thumbnail for document? And there are multiple ways to get that. And I'm not sure if from the consistency point of view, if they are the same or if you can do it more easily through this API. And maybe that would be like one of the, uh, the case, like one of the examples, why would you want to use this over uh, season or rest is because some things might be easier to accomplish with this. Sure, sure, sure. Uh, technically, the the same APIs. Well, the the this is this API is a sub uh, set of APIs which you have in CSAM, which is a subset of APIs which we're exposing in REST. There are certain differences in the statement, uh, but like I said, if something is easier using this API, why not actually use that? Um, uh, and anyway, this API. The primary purpose of this API is to work as the craft proxy. So that's why it was created. Um, as a side result, you can call the API also without the craft. That's kind of cool as well. So you don't have to have that authentication dance, so to say. Yep. But fair, um, when is it actually usable? In this case, I think we are looking into what's it a, a, it is a thumbnail uh, actually uh, property. Yeah, there you go. Accessing. So, so you can actually then get a nice set of uh, thumbnails for the images. Where are we getting that? I think all the way up. Uh, yes, I think it was there. <laughs> the interest result should there be in the end. The interest result <laughs> should be in the end. But there's the thumbnails for the for the images, so that should be. Yeah. Cool. Anyway, uh, and much more easier to do up than the CSM and and uh, REST API. So because there's a a direct property to do that. Cool. Uh, moving on, on on other topics, Waldex, this one uh, was the article which you mentioned you've been working right. on. Uh, so uh, we'll add a link on this one in the in the blog post notes as well. So common issues when working with SharePoint Framework API permissions. So um, the stuff which you can run into and how, how does it actually, how you get that fixed. Um, this will be outdated pretty soon as well. All right. That, because thank you. <laughs> that, that, no, no, there's a preview markers and all of that in here. Oh, so actually, so. this page looks exactly the, the same, right? So that's okay. Doesn't... Perfect. <laughs> 
Um, moving on on the on the article, so AC had a uh, article 1.7 on the SharePoint framework. So what's what's in the latest update on SPFX? Nice summary on things. Uh, maybe the well, AC was slightly disappointed that the only GA functionalities are these. The both are really big uh, important things, but there's a lot of kind of a preview capabilities uh, in the 1.7. Um, Laura, your opinions. What what's the most exciting thing in the 1.7? Uh, you can add SPFX web part as a Teams tab. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Everybody is kind of super excited <laughs> on that mm -hmm. one as well, uh, yeah. including obviously the SharePoint engineering team and and the Teams uh, dev team. Uh, so, um, because the in the past um, have well, I haven't actually implemented that many team, Teams tab, but it's been surprisingly difficult because you need to host that. You need to get a Azure AD uh, application. You need to, especially if you go to the production, you need to agree that the customers Azure AD people will approve your permissions and scopes um, uh, on that one. And that's always the challenge. Um, or is it, Laura, you, you work more with customers than we do? Well, Waldeck does, but I don't um, <laughs> <laughs> that much anymore. <laughs> is it a, so my, my uh, assumption or how I've been always presenting this, uh, it's been a while since uh, I've actually worked with the customers, at least in this, well, I do, but every, every now and then. Um, um, my, uh, my assumption is that this will be a massive deal breaker because in the many customer case, uh, the, the Azure subscription people who own the Azure AD are different than the Office 365 people. So therefore, if we need to have a application and a, or hosted Azure web app and all of that set up, it can take months in certain companies to make it done versus working only on the on the Office 365 and we host everything for you. Is that a valid statement from your perspective? Well, I can't say that I've experienced that. I quite often get like full admin rights everywhere, so it's my work is very <laughs> easy. Well, a big developer, you get full admin rights. Nice. Yeah, of course. <laughs> Trust you. Yes, uh, I think there's like one customer who doesn't give me rights to AD, and then I just write them instructions, and then they do them. Okay. I might need to send them another email. It's like I'm waiting. Could you yeah. do that, please? <laughs> By the way, you're delaying this million, multi-million dollar project. It's on you to deliver this. <laughs> so. Working on it should not take long, right? Exactly. Yeah. But I think the best thing about that is that you can use the same thing on SharePoint and in Teams. So you don't need to develop two different kinds of things if you want yeah, to show the same info in both that's places. True. That is true. Now, technically, we do also support, and, and um, Actually, AC doesn't mention this one here uh, either. We do support taking the existing Microsoft Teams tabs and host them in SharePoint as well, which seems to be not getting that well, much attention. Exposing them, not right? Ex exposing them because you don't host the tab in SharePoint. Well, we don't host the tab. You That's surface it. Right. Yeah. We're surfacing an iframe, which is actually a Microsoft Teams tab. So all of the existing Microsoft Teams tabs can be actually shown in, in SharePoint context as well, which I don't think that's so exciting uh, because the, the complexity of creating those tabs in first place, right? Mm -hmm. If you're that's using the old way of doing that. More people developing SPFX web parts than there are people yeah. developing Teams tabs. Yep, absolutely. That's what our telemetry is showing as well. Um, can't go to the exact details, but you're absolutely <laughs> <not done. laughs> cool. Uh, moving on on things. Uh, so uh, this one from uh, Simon. Uh, so Simon is is building this part one, two, three, four. I don't know how many parts there will be, and might have been actually mentioned in the first thing, related on how to uh, how to host an Azure or build an Azure function v2 using the PMPJS. So basically running the PMPJS, uh, which is the JavaScript library from PMP, uh, open source, Patrick Rogers is leading that, um, and build using that one as the, the engine in the Azure function to perform operations. Um, and that's a really exciting uh, process as well. And the, the key and, and the reason why we should always remember the Azure functions is that the business logic for SharePoint framework with parts should quite often be in the Azure function. If it's more complex, uh, if there's any artificial intelligence or prioritization or let's say uh, mathematics computing power needed, you shouldn't be doing that in JavaScript uh, in your web part. You should be do doing that in Azure function. So securely called Azure function, and then that one is doing the job uh, on the on the Azure side. Or connecting to on-premises. That's I think Laura, you actually even wrote a story related on that one, didn't you? Did I remember? About what? Azure Relay? Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think it was a really great article explaining how to make that happen. Thank you. 
I think we covered that in one of the episodes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. cool. Check. <laughs> <laughs> cool. Uh, moving on on things. So this one is from uh, Shanta. Uh, so get all attachments from a list uh, in SPFX web parts. So simple, uh, relatively simple uh, example on how to get access on the on the attachment uh, in the list items. So using the SPPMP uh, JS here. Uh, which gives you, I'm going to just pinpoint that BMP JS is the one which is giving you this nice fluent way of exposing the REST API. So you don't have to remember the REST API syntax. Sure, you still need to define what are the, uh, the actual fields and columns because we technically don't want to create types for all of those because they might actually change and all of that. So, um, but you get this sp.web.list, get the list by title and items and, and really nice implementation. Um, but a nice example uh, on getting the, uh, the, uh, the attachments uh, from the, all of the list items. So simple, efficient. Cool. Uh, top use of modern SharePoint sites. So this is from Dips365, uh, Deepen, Deepen Shah, uh, who apparently has tweeted my, retweeted my tweet. So that's always good. Uh, so <laughs> 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 but um, a, a Top 10 lists are always interesting, and obviously there's just multiple opinions on, on, the, on all of those things, but this is a nice list of, uh, let's say, um, uh, advantages of using the modern SharePoint rather than using the classic SharePoint. So um, sure, they're much more compelling, more mobile friendly natively, you don't have to do anything faster everywhere, backed by groups. If you want, you don't have to actually back by groups, um, but in, in many cases, that does make a lot of sense. Um, for years, it was highly confusing. Why would you have an Office 365 group versus SharePoint site versus something else? Now that we can actually have a SharePoint site, which is a group and the Teams is connected to that and all of that, it's a one entity, it makes much more sense. Uh, flexible organization related on hub sites, uh, list and library improvements in the modern experiences, new features are available there and easier to configure, really cool stuff um, and more secure as well. Uh, and future investments, because this is the area where we're investing in heavily in the in Microsoft as well. And Teams, uh, if you like Teams. So it's obviously debatable because some people seems uh, some uh, this came up within the Connect uh, conference as well, is that why would you use Teams? Why don't you use SharePoint? Why don't you use, why would you use SharePoint? Why don't you use Teams? And, and I, in, I would actually always say that, well, it depends on a company. In my case, I have 86 or 89 or something like that uh, additional inboxes because I have like 89 new teams teams in my Teams client. Uh, so it's it's almost too much. But even if it's a smaller company, maybe it makes more sense to use Teams and then surface the pages and, and SharePoint conference directly as a Teams tab. So absolutely makes sense. Again, depending on a company. Uh, I don't think we have an official statement from Microsoft saying you should do one or the other. Um, SPFX extension mail current view as an image, uh, nice article from Anoop. Uh, uh, so how do you send uh, the current view as an icon? Uh, icon as an image, right? Correct. <laughs> yes, that's the right, the right English term. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Joel had a, a nice, uh, a nice uh, blog post related on uh, PMPM usage with SPFX 1.7 um, and uh, how does, how is that working and, and if there was any, any adjustments to be done here. So, and what are the changes between 1.7 and 1.7, or 1.6 and 1.7. And then the last one uh, quickly also from Elio, uh, testing the UI of your SPFX solution with puppeteering and Yest. So Elio had a session in uh, Connect last week uh, related on this one and uh, basically explaining how it can be done. So good stuff um, and I think did we have a, oh, I was expecting maybe a video or, or key information, but no, no. Uh, but basically doing the testing in a proper way right now. So Elio is working for the Valo intranet, and I know that those guys are using this technology also for validating their uh, web part um, and solution, yeah. which makes perfect sense. Good, uh, we've been talking now, uh, well, not at, at much as the previous weeks, I think we're slightly, slightly trying to uh, slow down uh, the amount of content that we're covering because I'm always talking too much. Um, 
No can do. Uh, so stop. I stopped sharing. Uh, any <laughs> last words or messages or what are we waiting for? The European SharePoint conference is coming pretty soon. Uh, so Laura, uh, what was your session uh, on the European SharePoint conference in Copenhagen? I actually have two sessions. So on Wednesday afternoon, there's how to get started with Microsoft Graph for developers. And on Thursday afternoon, there's Microsoft Graph with Microsoft Teams. Cool. Cool. So you're more concentrating on the team side now. Should we be in chillers on SharePoint? <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think actually, I still do more SharePoint stuff than yeah. team stuff. But it's so old school, the SharePoint stuff. It's you know. Well, it would be quite a shame if all my, like, all my SharePoint experience just went to waste if I never worked with SharePoint anymore. That's true. That is absolutely true. <laughs> What's your, uh, just out of curiosity, what's your take on uh, the, the fact that how do customers see the teams and SharePoint positioning together? Um, how is it something, are they um, towards teams more or what's the demand on your side? Um, well, I don't discuss with customers so closely like our consultants do, but I would imagine that training customers is very important so they can understand what is the relation between Teams and SharePoint because yeah. um, this is not related to my work life but like more like private life. I know people who use Office 365 but they haven't got any training and they don't even know what's SharePoint. They just know that there's Teams and there's some documents and it's really difficult to find any documents. <laughs> um, <laughs> and then I just tell them, go to SharePoint. It indexes all your files and I'm like, what's SharePoint? Yeah. And you're like, <sighs> yeah. <laughs> Let me start. Back in 2001, Jeff Tipper. <laughs> <No. laughs> oh. Cool. Cool. Uh, looking forward to get you uh, and seeing you, Laura, in the ESPC as well. I will be there. Uh, Waldeck, you will be there as well. Correct. Um, and uh, Waldeck will be joining me on the dev keynote. Um, oh, now we're. That, uh, was that a secret? Spilling the beans. Know. Yeah, I think it was a best friend. Uh, so I think it's <laughs> I think it's fair to say that Waldeck is joining and doing one of the demos in the Vesa and Friends uh, section. Um, I think this time, uh, so Jeff Deeper has a keynote uh, when we start, a one hour keynote with Dan Holm and other guys, and then we'll have a dev keynote right after. So it's going to be interesting. Um, it's also more pressure for us because now Jeff is also sitting in the audience, so we need to think through what I'm actually saying. <laughs> exactly. Script, rehearse. <laughs> so, we should not forget to bring the uh, clapper. Yeah, that's true. Yes. Take one. <laughs> take one. Take two. Yeah. <laughs> cancel. Cancel. <Yeah. laughs> Can we scratch that? Uh, never mind. Cool. Uh, I, uh, and yeah, I think that's it for me as well. So concentrating on ESPC, making sure that the demos are working fine. Uh, we have quite a big uh, group of people coming from Redmond as well. Uh, so uh, we're making sure that the, our demo tenants are working properly. Uh, we had some issues related on site designs and site scripts, but working on that with, with uh, some squires and that should be fine. But uh, looking forward to seeing everybody in the European Shipment Conference. In person. Um, Person, yes. Um, we will be doing the recording of the weekly still on Monday. Yes, the ESPC. Is yeah, we have to, to figure out the yeah. logistics where and when. The yeah, one I thing is know. for sure, I won't be here. Yeah, I won't be here either. So <laughs> there you go. If I will be here, we have a problem. Yes. <laughs> But <laughs> anyway, thank you, Laura. Thank you, Laura. Uh, first of all, thank you for your great blog posts. Those are super valuable, uh, extremely valuable for the community to be able to follow up on those things. And thank you for joining us. Uh, we didn't give you too much stage, and too much, sorry for that. Uh, I keep totally on talking fine, too thanks. much. <laughs> I'm a typical introvert. <laughs> you could I say have... that this is the more the reason to get you back on the show <laughs> yes, again someday exactly. in the future. Exactly. Um, well, thank you, you for will... having me. We'll probably get you back on the show sooner or later. Um, you might might not believe this, but I'm an introvert as well. Uh, people don't usually um, get that, uh, but uh, some people do. So I think uh, while they had a good statement from last, from last week, Connect, it was avoiding people since 1990. <laughs> 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 You might see me in European SharePoint conference or, or not. not. <laughs> <laughs> You're hiding somewhere. Exactly. We'll see. We'll see. But thank you, Wanlek, and uh, the, thank you. Uh, we'll come up with a new uh, SPD weekly sooner or later. Thank you. Next week. Or within a week, <laughs> not sooner or later. <laughs> within a week. Fair point. Clap. Bye bye. <laughs> bye. Bye bye.